Today, we stand in front of Gozer, the Keymaster, and the Gatekeeper, and proudly say, Pi ain't afraid no ghost. A few years back, I was sent to New York for some work-related travel, and my only destination was the Ghostbusters Fire Hall. I felt like a kid again as my wife and I took the subway, navigated our way there, only to be greeted by this. A building in restoration, unable to be seen from the street. For this episode of Pi 26 Ways, I decided that if I can't go to the firehouse, well, I'd bring the firehouse to me. I started by scouring the internet for images of the building. There's plenty, although most of them are from the same basic angle. In Fusion, I imported the model of the Pi I always start with, and then started scaling things around it. By the time I was done, I had a model that I felt really suited the Ghostbusters headquarters that I had been denied. It also made me realize that this building was going to require a ton of support to do it justice. Ah oh well, as they say, fortune favors the bold, so let's send it to the printer. On a mountain of printers, in a castle of filament, I sat on a throne of support material. This thing is going to need some elbow grease. I got to work removing the support materials and slowly revealed a nearly perfect print underneath. As careful as I was, unfortunately, I broke off a piece of the window as I cleaned it up. We'll definitely have to fix that later. Now, my painting skills aren't great, but I figured I needed to give this thing the old college try. So I got out my nicest red and set to work with the paintbrush. While painting the brick was a little tricky, it was nothing compared to trying to paint the no ghost signs. My hands were shaking the entire time. But after a couple of hours of work, I have to admit I was pretty proud of myself. It really does look the part. Now it's time to turn our attention to that broken window. I printed several copies of the bar, including one that was lying down. I printed three standing up so that each one would have an opportunity to cool properly. Ultimately, I decided that one of these stand-up ones is the one that would fit, as with the opposite layer lines, it picked up the light wrong and it stood out like, well, a broken piece. Next, I cleaned up the area where the original one broke off with an exact knife and got it as flat as possible. I then used some sandpaper to rough up the edges of the model as well as the peg so that the glue would have something to stick to. Finally, it was time to install the new piece, hopefully without gluing the model to my hand. And I have to say, it did turn out pretty clean. You can barely tell that there was ever a break here at all. Now, let's get those windows in. I designed this with separate printable windows that slide into place so that we can light the inside of it. More about that later, though. And our assembly work for the case is basically done. I'm loving it so far, but now it's time to make it functional. I designed this case so that it would have room for an ice tower cooler, which makes overclocking your pie easy and as safe as possible. And remember how I talked about lighting it up? Well, the cooler of the ice tower has RGB, and I think this is going to look great. Working inside, the firehouse ended up being pretty tight quarters, but I was finally able to screw the brass standoffs for the cooler into the plastic by first putting the screws into them, then using those screws to screw the posts in. 
I then used pliers to hold the brass standoffs in place and remove the screws, only to place the cooler and then secure it with the screws once again. Finally, I connected the fan to the GPIO using a pair of pliers and absolutely double checked to make sure that I had them on the right pins. And with that completed, all that was left for me to do was drop the lid on and admire my work. This case turned out even better than I dreamed it would. While the no-go sign would have been better served printed in resin, I can't help but smile at all the little details I was able to fit in. Since I couldn't find pictures of the left side of the building, I made it symmetrical with the right side except for I removed the doorway. I ended up being really glad that I spent the extra time to model the windows in so that it could be printed in translucent PLA. While I think this case looks absolutely beautiful in the daylight, it's clear that it shines at nighttime. With the eerie glow coming from inside, I can just picture Egon and Ray performing supernatural experiments on the inside, setting the entire place aglow. Let's just hope they don't accidentally shut down the containment grid. This case is perfect for a Ghostbuster fan who doesn't want their pie to look like a pie. It really just looks like a model of one of the most famous buildings in New York City. I may not have gotten to see the real one in person, but after modeling this case, I feel like I got pretty close. If you're interested in printing your own, this model will be available on Thingiverse shortly after this video goes live. I'm also including a Pi 3 version of the building, as well as a version that has no cutouts for a Pi, in case someone just wants to print a model of the building or has another project in mind for it. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. There's nothing like putting the time and effort into a project and actually being thrilled with the way it turned out. If you end up making one, please post pictures of it. I'd love to see what somebody with a little bit more paint skill than I have could do with this. As always, thank you so much for sticking around until the end of the video. Keep those case ideas coming, you'll be seeing a couple of those popping up in future videos before long. And that's it for this week, but as always, printing makes me feel good.